Hey there, we're going to quickly go through how to simulate a simple DC circuit in Multisim. It's going to be a series circuit. We get our resistors up here in the top left hand corner. And I'm going to use three to create a series circuit with three resistors. Like this. I'm going to keep R1 as it is. I'm going to right click. I'm going to change R2 so it's 100 ohms. Ten times smaller. And I'm going to make R3 ten times smaller again so that would be 10 ohms. The power supply could be found from this tab in the top left corner. Drag it into the space and I'm going to send it clockwise, right click and then we connect up each of our components simply by left clicking and dragging like this. In Multisim it's very important that you put a ground in otherwise your circuit won't work simulation will be ineffective. So that's the basic circuit that we're going to use. But I'm going to go through three processes. I'm going to show you how to measure the total resistance of the circuit, how to measure the current drawn by the circuit and how to measure the volt drops across R1, R2 and R3. So let's go through the process of measuring resistance. To do that I'm going to disconnect the power supply we never measure resistance with the power supply in the circuit. We're going to get our meter from over here, top right hand corner, and drag that into the circuit like this, and just connect the meter across both ends of the circuit. Double click on the meter and make sure you select ohms. To simulate, there's a little switch in the top right hand corner. Click and stop and the simulation tells us that the total resistance of this circuit is 1.110 kilo ohms or 1110 ohms. We disconnect the resistance meter, double click and change it to amps DC. Amps DC, that's a flat line with an A. We're going to take our power supply back into the circuit now and we're going to connect the meter in series with the circuit. To measure current we always connect in series. Double click on the meter again and simulate. And the simulation tells us that we have 10.8 milliamps flowing through our circuit. There's a minus sign in front that simply means I've connected the ammeter the wrong way around. To correct that Disconnect it, right click, flip horizontal and have the positive go into the positive of the power supply. Resimulate and the minus sign will disappear but we will get exactly the same reading as we did before. Now we're going to do the three voltage drops across R1, R2 and R3. We drag three meters into our circuit. Double click on each meter and drag them into view like this. They default to volts DC, that's voltage with a flat line. So that's what we need in order to measure each of these volt drops. And we'll do the simulation now. The current we will see will remain the same. The volt drop across XMM3, that's R1, is 10.8 volts, 1.08 volt and 108 millivolts for the final resistance. Just to conclude this simulation we will note that the volt drop across R1 is 10 times larger than the volt drop across R2 which is 10 times larger than the volt drop across R3. R1 is 10 times larger than R2 and R2 is 10 times larger than R3. Therefore we can conclude that the volt drop across the resistance is directly proportional to the value of that resistance. The larger the resistance, the larger the voltage dropped across it. Finally, all three volt drops total to 12 volts. Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the sum of volt drops in the external circuit, that's the volt drops across R1, R2 and R3, 
must equal the applied voltage, which is 12 volts. That concludes this very simple simulation. Bye-bye.